Hi Chelsea fans, Chelsea staff here back with the match review. Chelsea 2, Fulham 0, the day after, the night before. Massive win, massive three points. Going to go through the game quickly and go through individual player ratings for the game. Let's see if your ratings agree with mine. Let's get cracking. So guys, what a win that was yesterday. If anything, that game was just as important as Real Madrid on Wednesday, Man City next Saturday. It was a massive game. The race for the top four, we've all seen how close it is. If somebody slips up, someone's going to take advantage and it's important that Chelsea keep the momentum going. And against the plucky Fulham side yesterday, Chelsea did exactly that. Fulham played really, really well. They started the game much better than Chelsea in the opening 10 minutes. And first half forced Edouard Mendy into three saves, one tipping over the bar, one low down to his right-hand side, and one right on half time via a deflection that he blocked away. Fulham, if anything, deserved to be on level terms at half time, but for Mendy, but the fact is they wasn't. A great goal from Kai Havertz with immense control. First touch from Mason Mount. We then capitalise in the second half with another great move. Chilwell's ball from left to right to Havertz, who takes a glorious first touch. Left foot comes inside, plays the ball to Werner with a great one-two. Werner picks the right moment for the pass and Havertz slips it past the goalkeeper. And it was a great performance, a good performance and three points. And the good thing was that we'd made five changes from the side that played Real Madrid with a chance to rest certain members and in-game take people off as the game progressed with it looking like Chelsea were comfortable. Fulham were impressive with their work rate. They were good as I say, opening 10 minutes and first half. Second half, they seem to fade. They lack that focal point up front, and I'll never understand why Mitrovic sits on the bench for as long as he does. So it was such an important three points, and it's now over to everybody else to play catch-up. We moved to one point behind Leicester in third place, six points behind Man United, who take on Liverpool this afternoon. Do we want a Liverpool win to keep the gap to United to six points to try and catch them, or do we want a Man United win to keep our gap over Liverpool in the race for fourth. I'm unsure. All I want to see is they kick lumps out of each other, if I'm honest. So let's get into the player ratings for the game. So let's start with the goalkeeper, Edouard Mendy. Now, people always talk about goalkeepers are judged, are judged on clean sheets and the saves they make. If you think about the game yesterday, the times that he made the saves, how important that they were. Yes, second half, Fulham didn't really test him a lot. When he was asked to stand up, Mendy did yesterday. And I think Edouard Mendy, for me, with the, th with the three saves he made, yes, the first one was easier, just tipping it over the bar, but the one down to his right-hand side and the deflected block that he made to still have strength in his hand to palm the ball away. For me, Mendy's importance to the game and the result yesterday was just as important as what happened at the other end. For me, Mendy, 9 out of 10. The back three, as we know, Tony Rudiger was injured, so Kurt Zuma came in, played next to Christensen and, and Thiago Silva. Zuma on the left-hand side. Zuma was fairly comfortable. He didn't seem to, do, to have any real issues. Was he a threat from our set pieces? No, because the set pieces weren't really good enough. I'd say he was above average. I don't think he was bad. I don't think he was outstanding. Obviously, he, he played towards a clean sheet. But he just did the job that he was asked to do. There was nothing really outstanding for me. So I'm going to go with Zuma, 7.5. 7.5 out of 10. The other side, Andreas Christensen, another comfortable game for him. He still gives away stupid free kicks. When they play the ball forward up to the halfway line and he's wide right by the byline, he still goes in and challenges people and gives stupid free kicks away, whereas he's nowhere near on goal. Just stand up, make them play the ball around you. Again, for me, I think Christensen, solid, above average, no real mistakes. And just nothing really outstanding, but he did the job he was asked to do. He contributed to the clean sheet. I'm going to give him the same rating as Kurt Zuma, 7.5 out of 10. Thiago Silva, for me, was outstanding. He was the best of the three centre-backs yesterday. He uses experience to move into positions to make blocks, to step in and win the ball by reading the game when they're trying to play balls through. Silva was a calm influence. He was constantly communicating and talking so for me, Thiago Silva's the best out of the back three for me. I'm going to give him the 8.5, one mark ahead of the other two, because at times he stepped up, made those blocks, made those interceptions, and it was key. 8.5 out of 10 for Silva. So let's go with the two wing backs. 
Ben Chilwell made an important contribution to our second goal, that raking pass from left to right to Kai Havertz. Apart from that, it was pretty solid. In the beginning, it was quite difficult to try and get out with Fulham, pressing with six players high. But Reese James and Ben Chilwell began to get more comfortable with possession, picking the ball up in the right areas, just playing it nice and simple, coming inside if need be, and just laying the ball off. Nothing really of major note going forward. So you have to give both of them a 7.5 out of 10. The midfield two, let's start with Billy Gilmore. At times, Gilmore was ushered off the ball with a high press from Fulham. At times, he's a bit, you do worry because if they put two players on him, because of his frame, he's only quite small, but he'll develop into the physicality of the game. So I think Gilmore was pretty much, was above average. Gilmore did well to handle the situation and at times left on his own in midfield with Mason Mount going forward. Gilmore, 7.5 out of 10. Mason Mount in the middle of midfield, I don't like him. I don't like him playing there. I've got to say, him playing a lot deeper sort of negates the qualities of Mason Mount. He's good, sort of going forward into the attacking areas. If you want to break it down, he played as a number six yesterday, the deeper line midfielder next to Gilmore. Whereas I see him as a box to box number eight or even a number ten. But look at his contribution in the game: key passes, trying to play people in, especially the first goal, the control from over his head from the great ball from Thiago Silva. To kill it first time, take a touch, then play the ball through to Havertz in a single motion was just brilliant. Outstanding Mason Mount yesterday. And the assist for Havertz was great. Mason Mount made an important contribution, took a whack on his back from a, a heavy fall and come off late in the game. Mason Mount's contribution was so, so important yesterday. His movement in the game, his willingness to work hard was brilliant. For me, Mason Mount, 8.5 out of 10. So to the number 10s yesterday, which appeared to be, at times, Kai Havertz and Hakim Ziyech. Hakim Ziyech struggled in the beginning to try and get hold of the ball under the immense press from Fulham. He collected it when he had space. The first thing he looked to do was play his passes and open the door. Hakim Ziyech is world class when he's got space and time to pick a pass. He just needs to just get used to being to expect to be hit. At times, he did collect the ball under a lot of pressure and he managed to come away with the ball. He had a good influence in the game. He come off, looked disappointed when he did with about 25 minutes to go. Maybe that's an indication for Wednesday against Real Madrid. I guess we have to wait and see. For me, Hakim Ziyech made a good contribution in the game. At times, he was looking to open the door. So for me, 7.5 out of 10. Then Kai Havertz, who did start the game, listed as a number 10, so that's what I'm going to call him, even though we all know he was the false nine. Kai Havertz started the game quite poorly. You have to say, there was time where we played the ball up to him and he just expected to collect the ball under no pressure. He was shut down, which led to Robinson having the first shot of real note, which forced Mendy into a save. Havertz tracked back to try and win the ball back. And when you see the replay of it again, he's quite annoyed with himself, Havertz, because he got caught out in possession. After that moment, he just grew into the game and he was collecting the ball under pressure. He was moving and combining well with Ziyech and Timo Werner and Mason Mount. And the goals he took were outstanding. The first goal, his movement off the ball was great. Obviously, the pass from Mason Mount was amazing. Kai Havertz takes the ball one touch, holds off the defender and then slides it under the goalkeeper. An excellent finish. Second half, his second goal, brilliant first touch from the ball from Ben Chilwell over to the right-hand side, and he traps it with the outside of his left foot into his path, then comes inside, holds off a challenge, lays it into Werner, and carries on his run, and Werner plays him in, and the, the finish was just calm, slotted it past the goalkeeper, a brilliant finish. Havertz made an important contribution yesterday to our result, an immense contribution, just as important as Edouard Mendy for me. Kai Havertz, 9 out of 10. Timo Werner, a lot of focus again yesterday on his struggles in front of goal. There was times where that he made great runs and he was played in, played a great ball to Hakim Ziyech, who should have scored, but he fired it straight down the throat of Ariola, who made a good save. But M Werner was always busy. He's always making a contribution in games for me, Timo Werner, despite the fact that people will focus on any chances that are played in and he can't get on the end of them. There was one late in the game in the second half where it sort of come over to him and he got his angles wrong. He, you can see he didn't know what to do with left foot, right foot or head it. And in the end, it was just a feeble effort on goal. But Werner was involved in the goal for Kai Havertz. He was busy in game. He always creates a threat going forward. So for me, Timo Werner, 
8 out of 10. So to the subs that came on, N'Golo Conte come on on 65, 66 minutes for Hakim Ziyech. And Conte was busy getting involved in defending and just, just being what, he, what N'Golo Conte is. 7.5 out of 10 for Conte. Tammy Abraham come on on 76 minutes for Mason Mount after he'd taken a bit of a knock. He come on and moved up front with Werner and Havertz dropping into the number 10 role. Tammy at times again demonstrated the fact you play the ball up to him, it doesn't stick. He needs to hold off these defenders and just link, be the link man. He didn't, but I mean, it was okay when he come on. He wasn't too bad apart from just that little issue. Tammy was looking to impress. He could only do it in 14 minutes. Seven and a half out of ten, as everybody else. And then late in the game was Marcus Alonso. Come on for Ben Chilwell. Alonso couldn't really get involved much. There was a chance for a free kick, but pretty much standard. So same as everybody else, 7.5 out of 10. That's my player ratings for the game. The, the outstanding players, obviously, Edouard Mendy and Kai Havertz with Mason Mount and Thiago Silva just behind them. Let me know what you thought of the game. Let me know what you think of the player ratings. What ratings would you give the players yourself in the comments section below? Drop a like on this video for me and subscribe to my channel if you haven't seen my videos before. And have a look at yesterday's live match commentary to get an idea of proper ball-by-ball -ball commentary from the Chelsea perspective. I'm back on Wednesday, Champions League semi-final second leg, Chelsea versus Real Madrid live here from 7.45 as we build up kickoff. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good Sunday. Let's hope Liverpool United kick the lumps out of each other. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. See you then.